Hi everyone, my name is Debbie and I'm on the creative design team at Sizzix and I'm so excited to share with you Eileen Hall's Chapter 2 collection, her Shadowbox number 1 thinlet die set, her Shadowbox number 2, and her Shadowbox elements which have all the parts and pieces that you can use to embellish any of your Shadowbox that you create with her die set. There's also a 3D embossing folder called the Crochet Mandala. Now using the Shadowbox number 1, I've created this project using all the parts and pieces and some of the embellishments that come with the shadow box elements. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera down so you'll be able to see hands-on the step-by-step -step instructions. Okay, so just to walk you through all the parts and pieces that I was talking about, this is shadow box number one. So you get this one large thinlet that you need to cut four times and that's what I'm going to walk you through um, when I did step-by-steps. So this is the main shadow box piece. Then you have all these embellishments. This can be the stem for your flower. This is the flower center. This is a little foliage, and this is a little banner. You can print a sentiment. You can die cut a letter, somebody's word, or sorry, somebody's word, somebody's name, and put that on there. This can also be cut as the mountain range. So if you want to do a mountain range, instead of using the grass that comes in the elements, then you could go ahead and do that. So that's shadow box number one. Shadow box number two, gives you the same idea, but you get a larger one. So creating four, cutting four of these will create a perfect square that's this size, this length. If you cut four of these, it'll create a square this size. Now, if you can tell from shadow box number one, let me get that off, this one is a little bit shorter. So the size of your actual shadow box will be different. But the great part about it is if you use two of these and two of these, you'll get a rectangle. And I'll show you um, how that would turn out using all four sides of the same one just to create a different type of square. This is also a one long uh, blade. So there's no blade on the end. So it will cut out a piece and I'll show you how to do that. That can be your mountain range also. Or this could also be um, just a little slit in your um, your shadow box border if you want to create a different uh, type of look or a technique. So that's the shadow box number two, shadow box number one, and the shadow box elements. That is using, showing you all of this is a little garland, this is a cloud, this could be a flower center or a sun, another flower. You have this cute little embellishment, cuts out the word home. Um, it cuts out the, so you'll have the negative space in this label shape as well as the individual letters that you can do in two colors and fill it up or just use the letters. And how cute is that with the O is the shape of a heart. A grass, a picket fence. And for the picket fence, I'm going to show you really quick how you can make it longer because if, you, if your range is um, mountain range or you're fencing in the animals, you might want a longer um, border as far as the uh, picket fence goes. And the grass and then all these individual little homes. So how fun is that? So. Those are the die sets that come with the Chapter 2 collection. And then here is your crochet mandala. Crochet mandala has a beautiful um, design, kind of like a lacy pattern. And I'm going to show you a technique that I um, did with the shadow box frames and also using this um, 3D embossing folder. The detail is absolutely beautiful. So let me walk you through it. I'm going to use our regular Big Shot machine. Now the Big Shot machine, you know, you need to have the cutting pad two cutting pads and the platform and the thin die adapter if you're going to be using any thinlets. So I'm going to be doing that. Now, who would have thought that those pieces would create that great looking frame? So this is the one that I use. This is from the uh, shadow box number one. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just, I need to cut four, but just to save time so you can get making on your, uh, shadow box. I'm going to cut one and I'll show you how the other pieces um, all link together. So blade down against the good side of the paper. You always want to have it a little slight angle so it doesn't bump when you run it through your machine. It just lets the rollers hit it at an angle and even pressure. So it's going to cut and it's also going to score the lines. Now the reason you need the scored lines is because you want to be able to fold it on the lines and they'll be evenly um, positioned and it'll match up perfectly on all four sides. And there's also a score line here for the tab and this is an additional tab. Okay, so I've already cut some and assembled a few. So I'm gonna pull this off to the side and let me just show you. So I'm gonna fold all these tabs down. You're gonna wanna have the good side 
on the outside. So sometimes what I like to do just to ensure that I have it folded nice and tight, especially for something like that, I like to do it both ways just to be safe. And the great ideas with this are, I mean, the things you can come up with, we can't wait to see what you come up with when you're creating your boxes here. So you see it all coming together like that. You're gonna take a wet adhesive or your favorite type of double-sided adhesive tape that's strong enough to fold um, the box together. And I'm just gonna make sure on this long, narrow tab, I'm using my Express Glue. Wipe down the puddle a little bit. And then I'm just gonna line it up, make sure the end of that one tab is against the score line of the tab it's up against. So you're gonna hold it down. The beauty of this is you can put your finger through it, fold it just as it dries. I'm gonna bring that tab up just a little bit. And then just to ensure the strength of the fold and the glue, I'm just gonna fold it back on itself to make sure it's nice and taut. So this tab here, this is just gonna reinforce the strength of your shadow box. So I'm gonna put a little more glue on here and this I'm gonna just bring it in and close it up. So that tab is fully adhered to the inside, okay? So I've got these pieces all ready cut. So I'm just gonna show you really quickly how to assemble it. So with the angle, this is the angle here. You're gonna make sure your angle is in this direction and then you're gonna take the straight edge. So you always wanna want your angle, your this angle here on your first one, put it in there like that and see how it starts to miter your box together. So if I did it like this, the next piece won't line up as a square unless I had it going this direction, which would not be a shadow box square. <laughs> so you wanna make sure that the angle is going towards the center of the box. So to adhere it down, I'm gonna take my Express Glue and just put it on the inside here because that's gonna hit the straight flat sides of the actual shadow box side. And you're just gonna lay it in there like that. And then I'll just hold it just to make sure it stays put. And then put my scissor in there just to Make sure it stays down, okay? And then another one. So I've already got these started. So this is the one I just did for you now, and this one I already did just had done previously just to save time. So I'm gonna go ahead, same idea. You're gonna want to make sure that the angle is going towards the box, not away from the box. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there like that. Now the last one is the tricky one. So before I completely adhere this one down, I'm gonna make sure that I have my adhesive on this one as well. And you're just gonna hold it till you know it's good and strong. And how easy is that? I love putting together boxes, so when I got this challenge, I said, I am going to make sure I got it right, and I was so proud of myself, and I texted Eileen just to make sure I did do it right, and she said, I did it. So check her website. She's got some great ideas, and her design team have also come up with some great ideas. So with those four sides, how great is that, and how easy is that to put together? It's so much fun. So this is the one that I'd shown you using the uh, shadow box elements. So what I'd like to do is, just to show, have a little reinforcement, I use our media board. You can do any kind of heavy cardstock. You could just do regular cardstock, but just to have a little more strength, I like to have that on the back. So I just cut paper, I believe it's four by four, and then adhered it to um, our media board. And that just gives a nice strong reinforcement to your shadow box that way. Okay, so I wanted to show you really quickly how you can create the um, mountain range. Now, I was showing you how it is that long, skinny blade, and it doesn't have a blade on this end, so it's actually just going to cut a slit. So I'm gonna do that. And then at the same time, since I have a nice big working space on this um, 
platform, I'm going to do the picket fence as well. My cutting pad on the top. Now my, my paper is just a little shorter than the blade, but that's okay. Use my die pick to get out this picket fence. Now, if I wanted it to be longer, I'm going to cut another one. So I had already cut that out. So here's the mountain range. So I actually can use both sides. If I wanted to do the mountain range this way, then I could do it. You wouldn't, you'd want to maybe cut it again just because the opposite side doesn't have the, um, the uh, finish of the paper. What I can't think of the, the textured side of the paper. Um, so, but you could do it this way and just trim it however you want it to be, but either way, it fits inside of your box. Now, since I already have my box adhered, I had already done the mountain range and I had cut it down to size. And what I did is I created my own tabs by um, folding it in on the inside. So I could add that to the inside and it'll match up perfectly that way. Okay, so that's a great way to do your little mountain range and add your little homes or a flower, or however you'd like to do it. So that's that. So just to show you really quickly how you can do a longer, um, a longer fence. I already cut two. So I had just cut one on camera and then I cut another one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim just those little tabs off of there. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of my express glue. Actually, I'm gonna put it on my hand. I don't want it to be over saturated with with glue. And then I'm going to trim the other one. And you're just going to match them up. It's the same exact picket, so you know it's going to match up perfectly. And there, that's a great little border to add to the outside of my um, shadow box. Or fold it down like I did the, the um, mountain range and just create little tabs to have it adhered down to the in inside. So I would put adhesive here and here to create that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do my little mountain range. I did a smaller one also earlier. So I'm gonna do the shorter one first. just to save time, I just won't add the glue there to adhere it, but just to give you an idea. I could have also added it before I put the backing on. It, it totally works either way. Um, so if I wanted to just do my little houses, I'm gonna go ahead, I could put some foam tape on the back just to give it a little dimension, or I can just put my adhesive, my um, express glue there. You could put another one on the back side, not on the mountain. It's kind of more in the distance. I mean, the possibilities are endless. It turns out so cute no matter what you do. The grass is fun too. You could add the grass. So if I went ahead and trim that, made a little tab and then trim that off, put a little adhesive. You're gonna, you would want to adhere it on both sides of the inside of the shadow box. I'm just gonna do it here just to save time, just like I did the mountain range. So just to give you an idea of how you can assemble that. Oops, my little house fell over. And let's just do one more little house there. And you've got the sun, you've got the um, clouds, you can do a darker sky for the evening whatever your neighborhood looks like. Actually, I think I will put a little bit of glue back there. I mean, how cute is that? The possibilities are endless. The detail is immaculate and it's just so much fun to um, create a little scene. So that's just a cute little idea. There's that one there that I showed you previously. This is using a completely different flower and a different embossing folder, but just one flower. I mean, how great is that? And this is using the vine just around the sides, same background using the flower. And I wanna show you really quickly the embossing folder. Now the embossing folder, 
you're not going to need the thin die adapter since you're not cutting anything and you only need one cutting pad. So this for the 3D embossing and one cutting pad. Now you always want to remember to mist your paper just because it gives a beautiful image and the detail is more, uh, it softens your fibers. So you're just going to mist it a little bit with the water. And I'm going to go ahead run it through the machine. I like doing it more than once just because with the softened fibers you know that it's going to give a stronger detail because you misted the paper. I mean with the inking and everything how beautiful is that? I mean, the detail is absolutely exquisite. And with a foil type paper, even better. So let me show you really quickly. Just say, since I've already cut this, just to give you an idea. I'm gonna mist this also with the water. And since it's already cut and it already has a score lines, what would happen if I laid it in here and ran it through the machine? So you're going to control the pressure by how many times you run it through. And since I misted the paper, how great is that? So since it already had the score lines, it's easy to fold still. You can still kind of see the markings of the folding. Of the score lines, I mean, sorry, not the folding. and you're keep able to keep the detail, it's all still there. Even though you're pressing it down with your fingers, the detail is still there and absolutely gorgeous. And if you wanna do any kind of inking, you could do that before you fold it. You need a little more adhesive only because the nooks and crannies of the detailed embossing folder. But just to give you an idea, even though you embossed it, the detail still stays and you're still able to fold it on the score lines. The score lines don't disappear. A trick that you would want to do is probably fold it before you emboss it really strongly and then emboss it. That way the folding stays, I mean the score line and the folding are a little more prominent too. But as you could see, I didn't already pre-fold it and look how beautiful that is. And I did it in another softer color. And then I would just, once I hear that one, go ahead and put that together. I mean, that is absolutely beautiful. But let me show you really quickly, just one more quick project I had done using the these two. So this is from shadow box number two. I used four of these and four of these. So using the four larger one of chapter of um, the shadow box number two, I was able to create this larger size shadow box. Obviously I would put a backing on there or I wouldn't have to. It just creates a larger one. So if I did this two times and this two times, it would be more of a rectangle. But using all four of this one, I mean, you can create four let's see, three different size boxes if you use um, this die set. And then what I love about this one is I use four of these, but look at it with the uh, crochet mandala and our gold luster wax. How gorgeous is that? I mean, the, you could double up and do a shadow box like that. What a beautiful home decor piece that would be. Or you can do multiples, do it like this. Have another one here have another one off to the side and just have it on your wall or you could probably stand up on its own. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. So I hope the tips and tricks that I've shared with you for Eileen Hull's um, Chapter 2 collection has inspired you to hurry out and order this or pick it up at your local store. You're going to absolutely love it. The detail is impeccable and the possibilities are endless as far as what you can create.
So I hope I've inspired you to hurry out and pick up this die set and embossing folder. You're going to absolutely love it. You're going to love what you create with it. If you have any questions about the step-by-step -step technique or any questions regarding this die set, please email us, call us. We'd love to hear from you. And as always, Eileen has some wonderful examples on her website, as do we. Thanks so much for joining us.